Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the province of Africa, which is quite a hub of excitement in our own game right now, and also factors heavily in the latter part of the Regency of Galliplacidia, as we will go into in this episode. So we're starting a new turn, and I think our decision was to move up here and possibly take Hadrumentum for the Eastern Empire. We are currently at peace now with the Picts and with the uh, Garamontians, Gaetulians, who are you guys? The Gaetulians. Now, we can, however, fight these guys who are raiding the Alamans, and we should because it's their king. There's the Gaetulians. So we're actually going to let the Gaetulians take Carthage, I guess. There's not much we can do. We can declare war on them again. I'm not too worried about it. But right now, let's take out the Alamans. The Picts should be leaving. Not sure what they're doing. They're just fortified here. That's fine, as long as they're not causing any trouble. He's raiding, but will he continue to do so once this falls? We'll see. So we're next turn we'll take, or we'll attack Hadramentum anyway. So I said I wanted to recruit some agents, and I do. So I have two priests and two champions, which I believe is the max I can have. So now what I need to do is recruit some spies. Let's see where I can do that. Cilicia, obviously. Cappadocia. And nowhere else. Or, well, Caucasia. But. So, Cilicia. Perpetual thorn in my side. I was going to improve the aqueduct, wasn't I? That'll improve public order by three. And that will basically end the problems of having public order there. Or, I could upgrade these two cities. 3,000 each, whereas this is 4,000. A quarry. That would hurt us. That lowers public order. So we just, right now, we just need to get public order situated. Of these cities, which one is the most threatened by enemies? Iconium and Myra. I guess Iconium? And how are we doing about food? Let's upgrade some food here. The wheat farm, definitely. Alright, so for our agent. Let us get a spy. Wealth from agricultural and animal husbandry buildings. Okay, so he'd be a spy you just have leaving around in your own territory. 5% chance less of being detected. That's kind of what I want from him. And cunning plus one, which is good as well. I'm assuming cunning plays a role in a lot. We'll take the cunning guy. Alright, I really don't have a lot of practice with spies, so I'm going to spend some time learning what they do. But he is recruited, and we are nearly out of money. Is there anything we can do with a thousand... I don't really want to recruit any backup infantry. You can move back to the city. You can move back to Salona. Where this fellow will give you... Some cataphracts. And some equites dalmate. Okay, the scout equites aren't worth it. We'll move back and recruit some more cavalry. What a life this guy has. He just hires cavalry, trains them, and then delivers them wherever they're needed. Yes. Rufinus is maintaining the blockade. That's fine. This army should actually be ready to go. Advance. This might be perilous, but we are going to try to swing around and take this island. We have a Western Roman priest. That's cool. Whatever he wants to do. Yeah, Rufinus, just stay where you are. Alright, Emperor, go back to Dacia. These people are just really not willing to be happy. We could do that industry. We should eventually do the town as well. Alright, let's do it. We could use the money. Dacia will at peace, hopefully, for a bit. Oh, wow. Dardania has a lot of empty lands that we can take advantage of. Maybe next turn... 
What's the fertility like in Dartania? It's average, or Dar Dardania. So maybe some sheep. Sheep or cattle would be useful. Oh, definitely improving Certica. Holy crap. Scoopy's probably a good idea, too. All right, next turn, we're going to put some love into Dardania. Although, despite being ignored, they're pretty happy. Parthian Legion is just making sure things are okay. Let's finish off these Cartlians. We're going to go back to the city. They, they're not in anybody's territory right now, and I don't want to screw around them. If they want to come back and raid, we'll take them out. But for right now, I'd rather just keep the city happy. Oh, you know what? I should have spent some money on some conversions. So a bazaar, huh? They had some interesting stuff here. Not what I would build, necessarily. What is this? A wind catcher? That needs to be converted, yes. The infantry quarters can only be destroyed. Let's do it. This can be converted to a scriptorum, I guess. That wouldn't hurt. But if we dismantle it, we could put it over to a forum, which would improve public order for a while, and that's a good idea. Food trader. Could be a food market. Library, amphitheater. They're already Zoroastrian or whatever, so I doubt making them Roman pagan is a problem. This is a pretty good building. A food market would be pretty good. We don't have any agricultural buildings in this region, however. The library would also be good. You know what? Yeah, we're not going to dismantle this. We might actually want to turn this into something useful to us. And the wind canter, we will as well. Alright, so we're good now. We're dismantling these two. We're going to keep everything else the way it is. That's fine. So maybe Dardania will have to wait a turn. So one of the most notable events during the late regency of Gala Placidia is that, as I mentioned before, she was a very shrewd politician. She was not, however, infallible. And there was a very well-known situation where there was kind of a triumvirate of power in the Western Roman world. There was Gallo Placidia as the regent, and then there was these two very powerful generals, Aetius, who we'll talk about definitely in a future episode, and Boniface. Now, Boniface was a supporter of Gallo Placidia, and she showed him favor. She actually gave him the governorship of Africa. So he was in charge of Africa, and Aetius was in charge of all the military troops in Gaul. And the Alamans are going to take the battle to us. I love it. Bring it. Aetius was a clever man and ambitious, so he hoodwinked both Gala and Boniface. So what he did was, he wrote letters to both of them, and to Boniface he said, Hey, Gala is unsure of you, she's going to recall you to Rome, strip you of all your titles, and take everything away from you. And then to Gala, he sent a letter saying, hey, Boniface is contemplating treason against you. Here's how I'll prove it. If you ask him to come and answer these charges to you in Rome, he will refuse. So he sent these two letters out, and I'll talk a little bit more about what happened, but you can probably guess. So we are being attacked by them. It is rainy. But we do have the ability to put our troops in an advantageous position, and I will do so. Corner camping seems like a viable alternative here, although I don't know if I necessarily need to. What should I do? We have an interesting setup here. Let's do... Let's actually do... A front line that has... Oh, crap. It's not what to do. A front line that has two infantry, two sword infantry on the edges, and spears through the middle. Then we'll have the rest of our sword infantry forming a back line. Actually, let's put them back a little bit more. So that our ranged troops... Actually, let's put the skirmishers on the edges for anti-cavalry patrol. Not exactly where I want them to be, but let's see here. 
There we go. And our one unit of cavalry here in the back. General in the back. That could be wider, but... All right. We'll move him to the edge when we can. All right, so. Let's take a look here. The enemy has reinforcements. All right, we should just move our whole operation up here almost to the edge because it looks like they're going to move around. Oh, they have pikemen. Interesting. Even more. Yes, I, I can see that. Thank you. All right, let's move you guys here. And you guys spread out really thin here. Okay. Okay. You guys will take this flank. You guys will take this flank. General will be in the back. Cavalry will kind of wait for its opportunity to do something. All right. So while they all move into position and we, they don't need to rush. Okay, so Gala did what? Adius suggested, and she said, hey, Boniface, will you come back to to Rome to answer these accusations? And he, of course, was like, oh my gosh, I'm in so much trouble. And he was loyal up to this point. So he decided to invite the Vandals, the barbarian tribe who was at that time in Spain, in Hispania, to Africa to hire them as mercenaries in order for him to fight a civil war. And he did actually rebel, even though he never had any intention of doing so before. So we had a problem. However, Luckily for Boniface, he was a well-known guy, and he had political friends in Rome. So these friends were like, this doesn't really seem like him. Like, he's generally a pretty good guy. Rebelling against the Empire is not something we expect him to do. He really likes Placidia. Something's up here. So they got the Empress's, or the Augusta's, permission. I don't even know if she actually was Augusta in this period. Just the Regent's permission to go and check things out in Africa. So they do. And Boniface shows them the letter, and they figure it out. They figure out they've been duped. So they go back to Placidia, and they let her know. And she's worried now, because she knows she's been duped as well. And she tells Boniface, okay, first of all, you got to get rid of these vandals. We have barbarians in Roman lands, and they're very dangerous. And you need to come back to Rome to help me against Aetius. However, it was too little too late. The vandals rebelled against Boniface, and long story short, over the next few years, they will be a continual thorn in the Western Empire's side, and they will conquer Africa for themselves. However, that story is different from Boniface's story. He gets sent back to Rome, and he gets put in charge of the Roman military, because at this point, Aetius is a rebel. He leads the armies of the Empire, and Aetius leads an army of his Gaulish troops and barbarians against him. So they fight a big battle, the Battle of Ravenna. This battle takes place in 432. Had to quickly look that up. And in this battle, Boniface wins. He actually defeats Aetius's armies, but he is mortally wounded in the battle. And so he dies a few days later. And Placidia finally realizes that the most powerful person in the Empire is Aetius, and she has to come to terms with him one way or the other. So she reconciles with him. He's brought back from exile, and he becomes basically the commander-in-chief of the entire Roman military. And at that point, he wields a substantial amount of power. While Galla is still the regent, she still on paper holds all the power. Now her political position is diminished with the presence of Aetius. Although he spends most of his time in Gaul, in strengthening the frontiers. Okay. What are you guys doing? They're shooting some cavalry up at us? Actually, not a bad move, considering that we have no spearmen in the flanks. But we do have two units of swordsmen, who they're going to have a hard time getting through. And this cavalry unit's just kind of minding its own business. Let's see if we can't just take them out with our archers. That would be helpful. Well, these guys will let 
fight. All right. So then finally in 437, Valentinian III reaches the age of majority and once again, Galapacidia is just a private citizen. However, until her death in 450 at the age of 62, she still wields a lot of influence and she's still relevant, especially in church building and stuff along those lines. She um, also plays a role a bit later in the life of her daughter, Justa Grata Honoria, who we will be speaking about in the next episode. And the cavalry is deciding to leave well enough alone. All right. It looks like they're leading their ranged troops incredibly unguarded. So we're going to make them pay for that. Our troops' morale is dropping. Oh, due to taking fire. Okay, I guess that's the reason why. What is your special skill? War Cry. That's a good one to have, actually. I like that one. This rain is making things kind of gross. Oh, we're at half speed. The whole time we were at half speed. I'm sorry about that. I wasn't even paying attention. I was like, they're moving quite slow. Okay, I don't know why you're turned in that such a way. These are just scout equites, so I'm not expecting miracles from them. But we can take out some hurlers. The battle lines have been met. They have a lot of ranged troops, so we are going to have to go after them hard because we only have one unit of cavalry. So after the lines break, that's what we're going to need to do. In fact, let's move our guys up in time for that. Let's utilize our skirmishers. Let's do what we can to take out their ranged troops. All right. Moving up at this front. You guys move up, definitely. Let's get our equites out of there now that swordsmen are coming up. That was actually a pretty decent extrication. Good work, guys. Let's finish these guys off. Okay. Let's have these two units of Legio come into Tensei's, just kind of get in the way of the ranged troops while these guys sweep around and try to do some damage. Let's back them up with the... Let's actually get the archers to go after their general. What is this? Bejeweled Retinue. I kind of want to see what that looks like. They look all right. Not amazing. Oh, I see what's happening here. All right, well, we got to help with that. You guys continue to go over here. Let's try to take these guys out here with all of our infantry. Cavalry, sneak behind here. Get these guys. Levis Amature, let's move up. Spearmen, move up. Archers are doing their thing. Let's go after their general with our skirmishers. Actually, let's stay with these Germanic spearmen, because they seem to be defeating our Lanciari Senoras. Interesting. Our main flank wasn't supported enough. Who are you fighting against? Hopefully it's not a melee unit. Shoot. We're going to have to fight them with our skirmishers. All right, General, we need you. Please stay alive. Skirmishers, go after these guys. Actually, General, I know exactly what you can do for us. Spearmen, come back up here. Oh, Pikes, that's why. I was wondering why their line was holding so solidly. All right, good. Move you back into the battle. 
Meanwhile, you can move up. Looks like their hurlers are out of arrows because they seem to be getting involved in melee. We may have to test Sudo our general pretty soon. Okay. We'll move this guy back up. We seem to be doing well in this sphere. Although, we have fleeing spearmen. What's going on over here? Well, this is not my best ever battle. But we got the enemy general. We have another unit of bejeweled retinue, but it's not the same one. All right, spearmen, can we please all Work together here. Try to take this guy out. General, move up a little bit. Cavalry, I know you're not the happiest you've ever been, but... Alright, you. Let's try to engage these pikemen. You just move over here. You move over here. Alright, General, let's see if we can't take these spearmen from behind. Why are we not involved? Get involved in the battle. We're going to win. It's just they have some pretty good morale. And our scout equities don't. Come on. Do something, guys. All right, let's get these pikemen from two sides. We're chasing after the hurlers with these guys. We've won the battle here. So everyone who is not the Emperor, will you please go and assist? Or not the Emperor, I'm sorry, the General. Oh, the General's doing quite well for himself. Alright, that should be the end. They did sneak a unit of Legionary Defectors up against our archers, but our Palatina Guard will handle that. Attacking Testudo. Nail him. Swordsman. Join the battle. Alright, let's see how the uh, general's doing. Very well. Running them down. Our cavalry's still in it. Victory. This is your day. Okay, 13. I think they'll they'll be gone. 117. Yeah, let's take them out if we can, please. Our one unit of cavalry. That's strangely... Or not strangely. Uh, typically, for scout equites, they are completely beat up. But they're doing what we pay them to do. Chase down fleeing enemies. Alright. We had a rough go of that. The Kings of Axum. Yeah, we lost almost a thousand men. We took out 2,500. Great. But we lost almost a thousand men. Let's replenish to the best of our ability. But we have crushed the power of these people, and our army has gained, either our army or our general has gained something, so Hadrumentum should fall to us without much trouble at all. Quadians are well, all the way down in Egypt now, or actually, where are you, Quadians? What are you doing? 
And Cartley is coming back. They're actually making trouble for our buddies, Cotes, who I don't really care about because I've been asking them to attack Cartley for like 10 turns and they haven't, so. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Well, next turn we have a lot of stuff to deal with, including hostile agent activity, it looks like. And we are going to need to replenish our Kings of Axum army. Although it looks like we did manage to take out a rank 5 general, so that is not too shabby. Once again, I am Marcus Aurelius. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good one.